fibroids basically they are now amenable to a lot of treatment options from non invasive like mrg fus to practically invasive which is surgery itself myomectomy or hysterectomy if everything like reproductive age group has gone so hysterectomy also for bulky fibroids so what is important mri wise is the field of view is very large and we can give them the exact idea of location of fibroids number of fibroids and their proximity to various other structures adjoining it and the way the fibroid is appearing on t2 t1 diffusion and post contrast dynamic sequence we can talk about the vascularity of fibroid whether it will respond to mrg fus or if it will require uterine artery embolization or something like towards the management part, part of it and most important if we can predict any sarcomatous change which has started within this fibroid that is the most important point so basically this figo grading is also available and that is based on the location of fibroid nothing else and this is what you can put on your reports also depending on whether it is a pedunculated intracavitatory fibroid it's intramural that is one and part of it is submucosal then part 2 is again it's more than 50% intramural and little bit submucosal then 3 which is 100% intramural with just endometrial contact so as we know the fibroids which are submucosal or just pressing on the endometrial cavity are going to cause some symptoms as compared to those who are completely intramural so dysmenorrhea menorrhagia all those kinds of symptom are more prone and even infertility with these kind of submucosal fibroids so that is important and then you have the subserosal fibroid which is 5 and partly subserosal partly intramural when it's a very big fibroid which is touching the endometrial cavity also and indenting the serosa also we call it 2-5 so it is both so everything intramural submucosal subserosal and then 7 is pedunculated subserosal these may be confusing sometime and mri definitely helps us to know the organ of origin because they may be kind of broad ligament fibroids or wandering fibroids and also getting confused with ovarian lesions so this is easy to pick up these have uh, like typical appearances the world pattern well defined morphology most of them are homogeneously t2 iso to hypo intense but with increase in size and starting of de degeneration of various uh, types like high line degeneration and myxoid degeneration we will see heterogeneity within these fibroids but only heterogeneity is not anything of much concern so what is important is to look at other sequences we'll see how do we see for the sarcomatous changes so basically the degeneration will be either cystic high line or myxoid the most common ones are cystic or high line degeneration and they start looking like heterogeneous on t2 weighted sequences with world pattern and t2 hyper intense areas within the more these fibroids are cellular they will be more hypo intense on t2 weighted sequences they can have fat content within so your plain t1 will be important before you give contrast and if that fat component is seen you have fat suppressed sequences to prove that it is fat and then it becomes a lipoleomyoma another part is adenomyosis we'll see in endometriosis spectrum also but these are similar looking to a fibroid but the margins are really ill defined as compared to what we saw for fibroids and you will have a adenomyotic uterus so asymmetrically bulky uterus where the anterior or posterior myometrium will be asymmetrically thick and these typical t2 or t1 hyper intense foci will be seen scattered within the myometrium and then a relatively well defined area but less well defined as compared to a fibroid which will be present in a adenomyotic uterus now coming to the sarcoma part of it so a lot of uh, articles are talking about four or five characteristic features based on which they want to characterize leiomyosarcoma or kind of predict it so we have tried and brought everything together and we also put it in our report as a small table so i will share that table with you and what is important is tumor heterogeneity or lesion heterogeneity whether or not necrosis is present within that you can see on post contrast and diffusion restriction so we have seen that diffusion is really helpful in these scenarios so even if your patient is for fibroid mapping simple fibroid mapping make a point to at least run one axial diffusion sequence in these patients so we'll see that in short while and these submucosal polypoidal fibroids they are also little uh, obnoxious looking on ultrasound they can be looking really uh, 
ill defined or the organ of origin is difficult to ascertain but on mr we can make it out that these are nothing but polypoidal endophytic submucosal fibroid so a basic reporting template which we are using for fibroid mapping consists of location of these fibroids size of the fibroids the larger ones sometimes it's like almost more than 10 fibroids small big so we don't give size of everything but the larger ones the submucosal ones which are important then how they are looking on t2 how they are looking on t1 diffusion characteristic if it is restricted then adc values figo staging as we saw and post contrast changes and whether we feel there is sarcomatous change or not so what are the difference between leiomyoma and leiomyosarcoma mri wise which we can use so basically if you see this case it looks very homogeneous on t2 sag t2 which is the first sequence which we acquire in pelvis and there are these vascular pedicles which are seen which is very common the bridging vessels which we see with fibroids but when you see the diffusion this fibroid is showing restricted diffusion and the adc value was also low on post contrast evaluation the dynamic pickup was also early and there was this area of necrosis within it so usually we see a homogeneous world pattern of myometrium like enhancement in these fibroid the smaller areas which are t1 bright they can show non enhancement because they are degenerated but here you see that the t2 is iso2 hypo intense and this area is not enhancing rest of it is showing restricted diffusion so these features are very suggestive towards a sarcomatous change in this fibroid a different patient and the lesion is more aggressive this time so you can actually see that the serosal margins are quite irregular this is to begin with it was a fibroid 2 years back on ultrasound was done and it showed an increase in size on ultrasound so mri was suggested this time so you can see that this lesion is there with irregular margins and again restricted diffusion with necrosis there were nodes associated with this so when these kind of features are there multiple pelvic nodes margins are irregular restricted diffusion necrotic areas on uh, post contrast evaluation and something like this that is hydroureter so it was even encasing the terminal ureter and causing hydroureter so this was an aggressive leiomyosarcoma and it also had lung metastasis so by this point of time so this is the table which i was talking about which we given all the pelvis uh, reports for fibroids basically we think that leiomyomas they are usually large uh, positive that is a normal leiomyomas leiomyosarcomas may be large but it is said that if it is a solitary lesion more than 20 weeks of gestation so because it is from a gynec reference so basically supra umbilical something which is going supra umbilical from pelvis and a single lesion solitary lesion is more likely to be benign leiomyoma so big large fibroid going into the abdomen is usually a benign kind of a fibroid then next is calcification that is more common with leiomyomas rather than sarcomas necrosis is more common with sarcomas can be seen with both restricted diffusion is very sensitive to pick up sarcoma so even we may be overcalling it but it's good to overcall so that during surgery they can accordingly plan if they want to keep some onco person with them or not because rather than them coming back and telling that it turned out to be sarcoma you didn't tell us it's better that you overcall it if all these features are present and then next about treatment outcome prediction based on mr features so mr gfus which is mr guided focused ultrasound hifu so basically the fibroids which are less vascular low vascularity is good for this hifo to work because then the heat dissemination in the vessels is less so basically in this what we are doing with we are focusing ultrasound rays on a particular point and burning the fibroid and that is under mr guidance so those have to there are lot of criteria like size criteria is maximum 10 cm size number criteria is maximum four fibroids they should not be very close to your bones etc where the heat sink effect is there not very close to the vessels so by that plus appearance so appearance wise something which is low in vascularity means the fibroid which is showing less enhancement delayed enhancement and t2 hypo intense kind of fibroids they are having more of chances of response to mrg fus whereas those which are highly vascular they are picking up early contrast on dynamic evaluation and they are showing all features of vascularities they will be more uh, responsive to uterine artery embolization rather than mr guided a uh, focused ultrasound 